Labradors have the distinction for being the most popular dog breed in the United States for 31 consecutive years. They are friendly and versatile dogs and make wonderful companions for families, couples, and single people. Labradors are ranked as the seventh smartest dog breed by the canine psychology specialist Dr. Stanley Corin. They are highly trainable dogs, and that is the reason they are often used as service, rescue, and therapy dogs. Obedience training is the starting point of the whole training process. It is a prerequisite, and a puppy is supposed to master it before moving on to the advanced training. Obedience training involves teaching them basic commands and certain behaviors, which sets the stage for further training. This training helps to control your puppy and make her follow your commands. Start obedience training when your puppy is around eight weeks old. It is a set of basic but essential commands that every puppy needs to learn. These are simple and easy to learn. According to the American Kennel Club, there are five basic commands that should be taught to every puppy. These are come, heal, sit, down, and stay. Each of these commands needs to be elaborated separately, which cannot be done in this video due to their length. However, you may find a thorough explanation of each command from an expert on the American Kennel Club website. Besides these basic cues and commands, there is a long list of more commands and tricks which can be taught to a Labrador puppy. Name recognition is often not taken seriously and it is assumed that puppies already understand it. You need to teach it separately so they don't think of it as part of another command. The simplest way to teach it is to use it constantly whenever you want their attention and when she looks at you, give her a praise and a treat. It is very beneficial if you enroll your puppy in a kindergarten or obedience class. These training programs teach them basic obedience commands and also provide an opportunity for socialization with other dogs. However, you need to make sure that your puppy has received her mandatory vaccinations before letting her interact with other dogs. Enrollment starts when the puppy is 8 to 10 weeks old. The duration of these classes varies. Some are 4 to 6 weeks long, while others are longer, also providing advanced training. These classes also give you information about how to train and interact with your puppy. You can find these classes at your local dog club or training center. You can also sign up for the AKC Star Puppy or Canine Good Citizen programs. Be gentle in your training and don't make it a challenging activity for your puppy. In the beginning, training may look like a difficult activity for both of you. However, an earlier start is crucial because puppies learn more quickly in their first few months. Labs are active and playful dogs, so you can incorporate training into their exercise. Don't overtrain them as puppies have shorter attention spans. Labs are food driven and using rewards will speed up the training process. For their easy understanding, give them more clues like using hand gestures along with the verbal commands. The training should be an enjoyable activity for your puppy and not a boring one. The best time for potty training a puppy is the day you bring her home. Since your puppy has just been introduced to the house, you need to establish boundaries from day one. They develop their good and bad habits during their puppyhood. Although they can be trained at any age, an earlier start makes it easier to train them. Puppies can learn something new when they turn eight weeks old, so don't start the training process before that time. This is a very crucial point. You have to designate a specific spot for your puppy's bathroom. Since the puppy just came to a new environment in your house, she doesn't have any idea that there are right and wrong places for elimination. That's why in the beginning, they just do it anywhere. You need to prepare a dedicated outdoor spot for the bathroom and then teach the puppy that she has to do her business only in that one spot. Puppies don't know by birth and they need some time to fully grasp the concept of a dedicated bathroom area. Make sure the spot is at a good location, easily accessible and away from distractions. It should be properly covered from the sun, rain, and snow. Choose a suitable spot because once a puppy gets used to a specific spot, it's hard to relocate it. Establishing a schedule is vital for the training process and it makes things much easier for both of you. You need a daily schedule for feeding, playing, and potty breaks. It helps to predict potty timings and thus reduces potty accidents. And to establish a regular potty schedule, 
you need to feed them on regular times because if they get their food on a schedule, they will eliminate it on a schedule. So maintain a regular routine for playing, eating, and potty breaks, and as a result, the training process will go smoothly. There are some recommended times for potty breaks, such as after waking up from sleep or a nap, after playing or exercise, 5 to 10 minutes after meals, before going to bed. Puppies have small bladders and a poor control to hold it. Young puppies need some time to gradually develop control of their bladders, and till that time, they need relatively more potty breaks. There are certain signs and behaviors which indicate that the puppy is ready for elimination and need to be taken to the designated potty spot. Supervise them closely, especially around their regular potty timings, and watch out for certain signs and body gestures. The most common signs are sniffing the floor and walking in circles, which means they are finding an old spot for elimination. If your puppy shows some restlessness and then does squatting, that often means she has an urge for elimination. If a puppy wants to go to the designated bathroom spot, she will whine or whimper to get your attention and then look at the way leading to the bathroom. It is perfectly normal to have potty accidents in the beginning and they are a part of the training process. Potty accidents are inevitable in the beginning, but they can be reduced and eventually eliminated. There are two main reasons for potty accidents. First, puppies need some time to get used to the designated potty spot. Second, they need some time to get control over their bladder, so they might eliminate anywhere until they develop full control over their bowel muscles. Don't punish your puppy for potty accidents, as that is pointless and a cruel practice. Puppies don't understand why you are angry at them and they may wrongly associate punishment with elimination, and next time, they will be reluctant to go potty when you're around. It is recommended to clean the mess completely and remove every trace of it. Dogs have a concept of territorial marking and odor attracts the puppy to the same spot. That's why you need to completely eliminate every trace of the potty accident. Normal cleaners may remove the stain but cannot eliminate odor and enzymes and that is why you need to use an enzyme-based cleaner. Potty and pee pads could be used in some cases. For example, if you are living in an apartment or if the weather conditions don't allow an outdoor setup. However, these indoor arrangements could only be used temporarily and are not long-term solutions. So, if you could arrange a space in your backyard or garden, you should go for it as it is the preferred option. Labs are medium to large dogs and are highly active, so they naturally want an outdoor space. The internal arrangements have long-term consequences because once your puppy gets used to the indoor setup, she will be reluctant to go to an outdoor space. The American Kennel Club considers the crate as a potty training tool. This concept takes advantage of a puppy's inherent desire to keep its sleeping area clean. So, if you keep your puppy in a crate, she will consider that a den and her sleeping area, which means she will be reluctant to urinate or defecate in her sleeping quarters and would prefer to go outside for the bathroom. This is an effective and easy method for potty training a puppy. It is recommended to associate the action with a command. You can use a word or phrase like do bathroom, toilet, etc. Use short and clear words. Use the same command consistently and don't change it. According to the Humane Society of the United States, a puppy can control their bladder one hour for every month of age. So if your puppy is two months old, they can hold it for about two hours. The American Kennel Club also recommends this month to hour ratio. However, puppies are individuals and there could be some differences in the timings. The best option is to give them potty breaks regularly without keeping them waiting for so long. The age of a puppy determines their ability to hold it. Large dog breeds like Labradors need around four months to take control of their bowel muscles and bladders, and till that time, they have a loose control over their bladders, which means they require relatively more potty breaks in their puppyhood. Potty training takes time, and it is certainly the hardest part of the whole training process. There is no single answer because each puppy is different. The time duration depends upon the temperament of an individual puppy and the consistency of the training process. However, labs are smart dogs and some are potty trained by the age of four months. It could, however, take up to six months. Sometimes, the potty training becomes frustrating and challenging, but you need to be patient and fully committed as it is totally worth the effort.
According to the American Kennel Club, crate training is vitally important for dogs. It is beneficial for puppies, adults, and senior dogs. It has been recommended by breeders, trainers, and veterinarians. It gives your dog a sense of security and safety. According to the Humane Society of the United States, dogs have a natural instinct to seek out a comfortable, quiet, and safe place. It is an important tool for preventing bad behaviors and is a safe way for transporting your dog in a car. However, if used incorrectly, it could become a disaster. Dogs have a natural denning instinct, and they consider the crate as a den. Sometimes it seems wrong to put these adorable puppies in the crate, but if used correctly and humanely, it could prove to be the best thing for your puppy. The crate essentially works as a puppy's own den and bedroom. Dogs naturally desire small, enclosed spaces, which they could use as a shelter and safe sanctuary. Labs are high-energy dogs and would create a mess inside the house if they are left unsupervised. A crate is the best place to keep them whenever you have to go outside for a short time. According to the AKC, crate training is an essential part of housebreaking puppies because dogs don't like to soil their sleeping quarters. It is a quick and effective tool for potty training a puppy. Using a crate is the safest and easiest way for transporting a dog. It is a great blessing in travel, whether you have to transport your dog by car or by airline. Make the interior of the crate as welcoming and comfortable as possible. If a puppy loves the interior, she will have an easy time adjusting to the crate. In terms of making the crate a comfortable place, the best thing you can do is to provide a nice bedding space. You can use a towel or blanket as a bed, but the recommended option is to use a dog's bed or crate pads because those are specially designed to be warm and comfortable. They are easily washable and are made from non-chewable material. You need a few essential elements inside the crate, like toys and treats. Use safe toys, like chew toys or Kong toys filled with peanut butter. The overall environment of the crate should be better in terms of lighting and ventilation. You can use a dog camera to watch over your puppy while you leave them alone in the crate. This will be a big challenge for both of you, especially during the first few days of crate training, and you need to be cooperative with your puppy. Encourage him to go inside by tossing his favorite treats inside the crate. Introduce them slowly and gradually. In the beginning, leave them in the crate for a short time, and then gradually increase over time. Your puppy may not be happy for leaving her inside, and she may whine, cry, or bark to get out of the crate. These are normal reactions of puppies after being left in a crate. It is important to understand that don't let them out immediately after they start whining or barking, because if your puppy learns that whining is a way to get out of the crate, she will use that tactic every time. However, if there is constant whining or barking, you should check on them, because there may be some other reason for their constant whining. This is very essential and often plays a decisive role in the crate training process. If you were able to build a positive image of the crate in your puppy's mind, the training process will take days or weeks instead of months. Make sure they have positive experiences throughout the training process and especially in the beginning. For this purpose, there are a few things you need to do. Make the crate as their favorite retreat place by decorating the interior. Feeding them inside the crate is a great way to subconsciously associate it with their bedroom. Use a lot of verbal praise and food motivation. Make the environment of the crate more like a den by providing enough ventilation, lighting, and view. On the contrary, there are three things which will ruin the crate experience for your puppy, and these are using harsh methods to keep them inside the crate, using crates of a wrong size, and leaving them inside the crate for an extended period of time. Do not rush the training process. Give her some time to get used to the crate and become familiar with it. If you were able to make the crate a pleasant space, they will develop a positive association with the crate and enjoy spending time there. It is often neglected, but finding a good spot for keeping the crate is essential. Sometimes a puppy is reluctant to go inside the crate because it has been placed in an unpleasant location. The goal is to find a spot where your puppy does not feel like she has been isolated. The recommended place for keeping the crate is the family room or an area close to the kitchen. In the beginning of the crate training process, keep the crate close to you. At night, you can keep the crate in your bedroom or an adjacent corridor. 
Labs are very social and friendly dogs and they want to be around their family members. Avoid keeping the crate in isolated places like a backyard or basement. Puppy should not feel isolated or abandoned, otherwise she will hate the crate. Choosing a right size crate is mandatory. If you buy a small crate, your puppy will have difficulty adjusting to it. However, if the crate is too wide, they will use one corner of it as a bathroom, so you need an appropriately sized crate. The general rule of thumb is to buy a crate that is large enough for them to stand up, turn around, and lie down easily. The crate should be like the exact replica of a den, which means an appropriate and confined space. Labradors are medium to large dogs, and they could reach the height of 25 inches, so you need to buy a crate that can accommodate them. As puppies grow rapidly during their first few months, and obviously you can't buy a crate every time your puppy grows, the practical option is to buy a crate that comes with dividers, so as the puppy grows, you can partition off the space according to the size of your puppy. There are a variety of crates available in the market. Wire crate is the most commonly used crate. It is collapsible and often comes with dividers to allow for size adjustment. It is a preferred option for home usage. Wooden crates are also a good choice, and some people prefer it. But since they are made from wood, puppies might chew on them. The plastic and fabric crates work as dog carriers. Unlike wooden crates, they are not heavy and can be carried anywhere. They are portable and thus frequently used for traveling purposes. These crates are even approved for airline travel. However, because of their plastic or fabric material, puppies are tempted to chew or scratch them. According to the Humane Society of the United States, puppies under six months of age should not stay in a crate for more than three or four hours at a time. The time duration inside the crate depends upon their age. Puppies need relatively less time in the crate than adult dogs. Labs are highly energetic dogs, and they are recommended for active families. They are a hunting and sporting breed who need proper mental and physical exercise. They are not supposed to be left in a crate for an extended period of time. So the ethical usage of the crate is a condition you must fulfill. Dogs need to be in a crate for a short time and when necessary. If you are going for an 8-hour work shift, you should not keep your dog in a crate. Instead, hire a dog walker or take them to a daycare center. A crate is a management tool, not a place of punishment or confinement. An incorrect use of the crate will cause depression, separation anxiety, and destructive problems. As usual, the time duration for crate training a Labrador depends upon an individual puppy. Some puppies like the crate immediately, others need some time to get used to it. If you want a fast training process, make the crate a comfortable place and leave them inside only for the required time. And as a result, your puppy would love the crate. The consistency of the training also plays a big role. Labs are very smart dogs and they are fairly easy to train. Dr. Stanley Corin, a famous canine psychologist and researcher, has ranked dogs on the basis of their intelligence. In this list, Stanley Corin has ranked Labradors as the seventh smartest dog breed. They are fast learners and love to please their owners. Although, they were originally bred to be hunting and retrieving dogs, but nowadays they are a favorite choice for service and therapy dogs because of their high trainability and friendly nature. Training them is not a difficult task as long as it is done properly. The training sessions are supposed to be short, focused, and entertaining. Long sessions are boring for dogs. Puppies have relatively shorter attention spans than adult dogs. Labs are very active and playful dogs, and sometimes they may not be interested in the training process. And in such cases, you can reschedule the session. A focused session of 5 to 10 minutes twice a day is enough for them. Positive reinforcement in the form of praise and treats is very helpful for the training process. According to the American Veterinary Society for Animal Behavior, evidence supports the use of reward-based methods for all canine training. Aversive methods have both short and long-term effects on dogs. Reward-based training has proven to be very effective for the training process. You can encourage good behaviors using praise and treats. However, be careful about their treats intake since labs are prone to obesity. Punishment is a cruel and ineffective method. If your dog shows any undesired behavior, you should correct them using positive methods. The negative methods will make them fearful of you, and the required bonding between you and your dog will be disturbed. 
Socialization is a basic need of dogs, and it is essential for the training process. A properly socialized dog is less likely to develop behavioral problems. Labs are friendly and people-oriented dogs, and they need to be introduced to new people, places, and animals from young age. Poorly socialized dogs become fearful and often show aggression towards other dogs and humans. The first few months of their life are considered as the prime time for socialization. These two are the crucial parts of the training process, but they are related to the owner and not the dog. Training is a gradual process and there will be ups and downs. For puppies, learning takes time and repetitions, and some setbacks are common and normal. You need to be patient, consistent, and fully dedicated to the training process, and you will see surprising results.